Welcome to the Lighthouse Financial Advisors Money Over 50 podcast with Dallas Davison and Michael Hoag. This information is general in nature and does not take into account your objectives, financial situation or needs. Therefore, you should consider whether the information is appropriate for you and your personal circumstances. If you require personal advice, please contact Lighthouse Financial Advisors. Here are your hosts, Dallas Davison and Michael Hoag. Welcome to Money Over 50. Today we've got a topic, Generation X turns 55. My generation. Your generation. I, I, Although I, I'm not quite there yet. Man, unfortunately, I, I kick into the category of a millennial, so I can't I can't really be too involved. But uh, yeah, it must be exciting for your whole generation to turn 55. Well, as the new decade rolled around, I, it, it, it occurred to me because someone, I, I was reading the other day Generation X, yes, yeah. from 1965 to yeah. 1980. Yep. Yeah. And I went, oh my God. Yeah, that's it. The, uh, <laughs> that's, that's the, the first Generation Xs. Yeah. Turned fifty-five in two thousand and twenty. Yep. So, um, it, so we, we've been dealing largely with with the majority of our clients are yep. uh, uh, baby boomers. Yes. And baby boomers, it's been it's been, yeah, you know, it's always been written about yes. in media up until right now. Yep. That the baby boomers are worried about their retirement. The baby yep. boomers, uh, you know, are entering retirement. Yeah. Um, the approaching retirement, yeah. But 2020 marks the first year where it's it's just crept up, yeah. So it just crept up, and yeah. Generation X, yeah. Um, and which I've always considered a young generation because yeah. I'm part of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was born in 1975, so well, I'm turned 45 this year, yeah. Um, but the first of our of our generation actually turns 55, yeah, this year, which which. Um, Look, what is significant for a couple of reasons. One is um, we find that people contact us at that age. a lot, and we actually guess their age over the phone. They they yeah. they they they're blown away when we yeah. say you're yeah. about fifty five years yeah. of age, and they say, "How did you know?" Yeah, and um, we said, "Well, you're calling us for the first time," and yeah. you, you, you know, yeah. um, generally people call us for the first time around age 55 because yep. um, a light bulb goes off in their head. Hey, yeah. we've just turned 55. We've, we've got 10 years to go until the traditional age yep. of retirement, mm-hmm. which is 65, yeah. of course. Um, and, that's, and that's why it, it's an interesting one because it sort of all lines up. It's a new decade. It's a new you know, new decade, new year. And, and I think this will be an interesting one for, as you say, you know, you're actually a part of this generation. So it seems like we we see this all the time with people who are so baby boomers or people in their early sixties or even mm. you know late in their fifties and they a lot of their a lot of what they everyone says the same thing which is I wish I came and saw you five years ago mm. and so I think that what we we'll, what we see a lot of them for the first time when someone comes to see us fifty five is a big tipping point because it's kind of until that point in time you can probably push it back a bit and go well especially as you say. If you think of yourself as a Generation Xer, not that people think of it in that terms, but no. whenever we talk about retirement, we're thinking, we're naturally just thinking about baby boomers. And, yes. and oh yeah, that's the baby boomer thing. They're worried about their retirement. And yeah. Baby boomers are worried about franking credits and baby boomers are worried about Centrelink rules and all yeah. those kinds of things. But what you're saying here is that this is really the first year that, that the oldest cohort of, of the, that next generation, it's a... Uh, not only is it a time when they will be starting to worry about or starting to think about it, but it's it's really prime time that they that they should be thinking about it. Look, it, it, it you, you hit the nail on the head before when you said everyone that comes in to see us yeah. says yeah. we wish we did this five years ago. Yeah. Um, the important point we say to them the important thing is that you're here now. Yeah. And look, there's so much that can be done. Yeah. In ten years. Yes. So so um, uh, ten years is. One of those periods of time where it goes so quickly, yes. Yet, yeah, it seems you can, yeah. you can. It's long enough to really make a huge what you difference. can get done in ten years is, is astronomical. It, it, it is astronomical. So for, um, I mean, we always say that bef- everyone has individual goals. So people come to see us, and they all need different yeah. lots of income in retirement, and they have different. Subtly, they have yeah. different goals. Yeah. Um, we start with an assumed goal. Yeah. 
that uh, that people that are coming to see us for the first time at age 55, yeah. we, we, we start with the assumed goal that we want to add half a million dollars yeah. to their retirement savings balances yeah. by the time that they turn 65. So in that next 10 years, yeah. on top of where they on would top be. of where they would be. So if they hadn't walked in our door, yeah. you know, they'd get from uh, A to B. Um, yeah. uh, we we want to be we A, want to get them A from to B A to, plus yeah, A to B plus five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And regardless of where they were going to end up, yeah. um, the power of that extra five hundred thousand dollars yeah. is generally enough to to be the difference between yeah. a uh, yeah, a retirement without too many choices to a retirement with, with plenty of choices. That's right. Yeah. So um, so people I mean oftentimes think it's too late yeah. um, at fifty five. Yeah. It, it, it is a funny one, isn't it? Because there's normally an age. It's it's like a it's like when I'm navigating a car because I'm the worst navigator in the world. It's no, don't turn off yet. Don't turn off yet. Don't turn, okay, turn off back there. <laughs> so it's normally that we we think we're too young to think about it. Or we're too young to worry about it. I'm only in my forties. It's all good. Oh, geez, I've just turned fifty. Oh, I'm only fifty-two. I've got plenty of time. I get I got plenty of time. I'm fifty-five. Yeah. Oh, geez. Okay, now I'm fifty-six. Oh, it's too yeah. late. I'm too old. Too don't late, worry yeah. about it. And that's. That's, I guess, the, the thing that we, we see day in, day out, and that we keep saying is, is that like, 10 years is a great time frame of, say, for, for this oldest cohort of, of Gen Xs that are 55, turning 55 this year, even, even you know, in the years preceding that, from 50 to 55, it's prime time to really, to really start, to, start to look at this sort of thing and, and look at the difference that you can make over the next 10 years. Yes, well, I mean, we've always said that between 50 to 55 yeah. is the perfect age to start looking at your yeah. retirement. Now, of course, it's better to look at it at 45. Yeah. Um, yeah. What we find, though, is yeah. that is that people that look at it at 45, um, there's only a small minority of the population yeah. that can actually stick with the plan yeah. from that age because yeah. um, life gets in the way. Yeah. So, you know, people at well, 45 yeah. obviously they've have younger children. Kids and they've yeah. got school fees. All those sorts of all things. Those sorts of things. Yeah. Um, whereas uh, between fifty and fifty-five, yep. there's 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 more of a. I mean, retirement is closer for yeah. those people, and yeah. it's within reach. Yeah. And we find that um, there's just a much higher yeah. commitment level yeah. at that point in time, which is which is so important because, yeah. um, you know, we're really like the coach of a of a of a, of a talented. I keep using this analogy because it's Roger, the only one that is I know. Is this Roger Federer tennis? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. It's 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 um it's it's well it you could you could use it that way. So I mean, um, we don't get that. No, no one achieves that extra half a million dollars yeah. without their hard work, their yeah. significant hard work. So yeah. I mean, we have a saying: um, our good work mm. and our clients' hard work yeah. is what makes it is what makes them. Yeah. You know, um, is what. Uh, provides that extra half a million dollars. Yep. Um, so it's a little bit like a, uh, you know, I always say a talented sporting team. Yep. Um, they could have the best coach in the world if they're not gonna put in the hard work, yep. they're not gonna get the results. Yep. Yeah, they might make the semi-finals, yep. but they're not gonna win the grand final yep. uh, because yep. because they haven't put in the work. So, yep. you know, we, there's, when we work backwards and say, okay, you're 55 now, um, yeah, you're a couple, for example. So you yeah. have, uh, you each have 260 fortnightly paychecks. Yeah. If you get paid, I say check. Uh, yeah. No one gets paid by check anymore. <laughs> no. but, uh, you've but, got, yeah. but 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 you have 200, a, a maximum you, of 260, 260 times. And um, your spouse has 200, a maximum of yeah. 260. Yeah. So yeah, if we work backwards and say, okay. Each fortnight, we need to be. Yeah. You need to be giving up some money yeah. um, to go into your retirement savings, your superannuation fund. Yeah. That's their hard work. That's the equivalent That's of them right. doing the hard work, the physical yeah. training. Yeah. Um, our our uh, good work yeah. is is um, from the coaching side of things, and that's by looking at the legislation yeah. and saying, okay, well, we know that you're. Currently not um, yeah, taking yeah. advantage of all the tax deductions that you can. Oh, here's another seven thousand dollars that you're going to save yeah. in tax, which will go straight yeah. into your yeah. super fund each year. Yeah. Um, you well know, here's it. the investment strategies that you can look at uh, yeah. that we think that. you're a bit yeah. too conservative for what you require. Yep. Yeah. So we and, can, and that's that's I guess the 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 whole our, 
their whole point here of the yeah you know, that that 55 is, is such a tipping point um, and, and for most people for most people who are in that Gen X um, age range what will happen is that you know the next the next five years the next 10 years will come and go for them regardless so if you're 50 right now mm. you're either going to keep doing what you're doing for another five years and then you're going to turn 55 and go geez I'm 55 I've only got 10 years to go that's as you say there's a huge amount that we can do in that last 10 mm. years but for a lot of people that if you're, if you're, I guess it's, it tends to be those two ages, and it's either 50 or 55. Mm. Someone who comes to us at 50, they may not have quite as much in superannuation, but what we tend to find is that it's really interesting that the amount that they are required to give up every every week, if they if they only if they plan to work for another 15 years compared to 10 years, the difference of what they have to give up every week is is far less because they've got that extra time working for them. Yeah, the extra, I mean, the compounding of that extra five years yeah. um, really makes a huge difference. Yeah. And um, the, the other point is that uh, oftentimes people come to us as well and, and they actually need a few things unwound. Yes. To yeah. actually, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that takes time. Yep. Yeah. That's so, right. you know, common things that we see at the moment are people that have a significantly underperforming rental property. Yeah. And, um, yep. yeah, you, you do the numbers with them and it's certainly not working and yep. it's taking a massive drain on the, yep. on the disposable income. Yeah. And if they um, had that disposable income instead going yep. into the superannuation fund, which can also be tax deductible to yep. them, then uh, the returns they would get. Now, they can't sell that property overnight. Yeah. Like, like yeah. it takes time to actually yeah. get the deduction rate to sell that property. Yeah. Um, another common one that we see are people that are still paying off, off, you know, they might have a um, car loan or something yeah. like that it's that runs like for that. another yeah. two years. Yep. And and so they can't yeah. put the money that they were putting to that into yeah. the retirement yeah. savings. So, yeah. so, I mean, oh, yeah, we're not saying don't um, start at 50. Yeah. I mean, if you're listening to this, yeah. Uh, at forty five, yeah. then we're yeah. not saying don't start at forty five yeah. either. Yeah. Um we're 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 saying it's certainly not too late at fifty five. No, that's right. And, and uh, look it's not too late at any age really, but but it's no. but it's but, but between fifty five and sixty five yeah. in a decade. Yeah. Um it's 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 we can for most of our clients, if not all of our clients, achieve a yeah. half a million dollars. Um, yeah. difference yeah. and that's uh, not all magic of yeah. course yeah. in fact not most of it isn't magic it, it's, it's, a, it's actually <laughs> I was thinking, hard have work have you got some magic <laughs> <laughs> I don't have got any I've just got tax savings and cool yeah well tax, like tax savings <laughs> is, is, is quite good yeah. Um, but um, yeah it, it's, it is an interesting one and I was actually thinking about this because so when we did a financial planning appointment for yourself and Susie the other day so Obviously, because I'm the best financial planner in Australia, you came to me to, to do a to do an appointment with yourself and your wife. Have you ever seen that movie, uh, that show that used to be on in the uh, '80s? You probably wouldn't have seen it. No. Um, Kung Fu, it was called. Cool. No. It was um, no. Master and <laughs> Grasshopper. <laughs> so Grasshopper, you, you um, yeah, <laughs> you got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah, no, you you you've been trained by the best. So, <laughs> so, so obviously, I th- I think I'm the best, but. Um, what I, what I was getting to, other than that little segue into having a dig about how I'm the best, is that it was sort of interesting, I think, uh, probably from your end to see that, and you know these numbers, that, so you're 45, when we looked at, you know, projecting at superannuation balances and those sorts of things, the, the difference between looking at it at 45 and having kind of 15 years to go until you're 60 or 20 years to go until you're 65, it's, it's a huge, huge difference there, like that, that compared to someone coming in for the first, looking at this for the first time at 55, yes. is that, as we say, for most people at 45, it's not really the, the front of mind. But that's that's the big one, I think, is that if you look at that, that 55 age is going to come around and it's either going to be, you know, in five years, you're going to, people are going to keep doing what they're doing for the next five years. So they, that oldest cohort of Generation Xs that are between 50 and 55 now, they're either going to keep doing what they're doing for the next, you know, five years yeah. and then suddenly hit panic stations yeah. or they're going to get to that point and go geez I'll think about it now and then and then there is really a, a lot a lot more of it is the time doing the work for you 
and your, your super that, that, That's right. The time, that's a great point to make. So in, in five years, yeah. I mean, we say 10 years goes quickly. Five years it goes in just goes fingers. in the yeah. snap of a finger. So, so um, and it's not exactly this equation, but if you're 55 and to get where you need to be, you have to put in $500 a week yeah. to your superannuation fund. Yeah. Um, um, at 50, yeah. over 15 years instead of 10 years, it's, yeah. it's, it's about half. Yeah, it's, it's, it it's something like about $250. Yeah. So yeah. it's half the amount yeah. over over only um, yeah. you know, yeah, 50% more yeah. of the time. Yeah, that's yeah. right. It's a, yeah. It is interesting with that, that sort of thing because it's something that we've, even as as an advisor, you have to run the numbers on it sometimes and check you know, and the, check if that's, that's right. right? Because yeah. you, so, you know, if I've done a, a first meeting with someone who's fifty five and they've got, to, as you say, they've got to come up with five hundred bucks a week uh, out of their own cash flow, and then someone who's fifty and I do the same numbers, you come well, that I just did this yesterday, so that but the numbers are completely different, yeah. And and that's uh, that's I guess a, a great point is that you know, obviously this podcast is called Money Over Fifty, and so. I think it's probably something that, like most of our uh, discussions, are geared towards people turning fifty-five, and and mm. because that's when people first come in. But I think it's probably, I guess, from my end, uh, a great takeaway for for people to leave this discussion is, is around that extra five years. So for that that oldest cohort of Gen X, that extra five years of having your money working for you, just putting a little bit aside every week, picking up all those tax savings for the extra five years. By the time you by the time you actually reach that fifty five, which is normally when people hit the panic station, you, you can be a long way in front of where you were on track yeah, to be. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, I guess in wrapping up, uh, you're listening, and you're between the ages of fifty to fifty five or fifty to sixty. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. really matter. Yeah. Um, certainly, we would say the 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 time to look at this is now. Yeah. Um, look, I- even though. Uh, yeah, it's a new year and a new decade, which is just what we've made up as human yeah. beings. Um, there is yeah. something refreshing about a new that's year right. and a new decade. Yeah, and and um, starting off the decade, and, and that's a great point because, as you said, and as I was saying before, everyone who comes to see it for the first time, and we look at the difference that that can be made over ten years, and we talk about the compounding mm. effect of things. Everyone says, "I wish I'd, I wish I'd come in five years ago," and as I said, we can't. The, sec- the, the best time to start was five years ago. The yeah. second best time is now. Is now, yeah. And that's where we're at. Yeah, so um, uh, by all means, feel free to get in touch with us at lighthouseadvisors.com.au mm-hmm. and um, we'd only be too happy to meet with you to discuss uh, a retirement plan. Michael would be happy to discuss with you all sorts of Generation X things, the movies, that the Seinfeld. Yeah, clients, well, well there's plenty. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm certainly certainly a big part of Generation X. Yeah. So, um, yeah. it, and like I said, it, it it's it really stuck up with me yeah. that the older yeah. or the, the earliest cohort yeah. of Generation X yeah. um, are turning fifty five in two thousand and twenty. Right. So yeah, very so um, yeah, uh, it's certainly it's 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 what we've always spoken about as um, as a baby boomers. Yeah, problem. thing to worry about or problem yeah. is is now Becoming squarely a Generation X yep. problem as well. Absolutely. So, bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Money Over 50 podcast with Lighthouse Financial Advisors. We look forward to catching up again soon.